welcome to Murphy's Garden and in today's video we're going to be talking all about box that's boxwood or boxus sempervirum to give it its proper name so box is usually grown as a clipped formal plant or hedge and it's really great at providing evergreen structure in a garden and giving a formal look to a garden too and in our garden we've used it in lots of places to give us that sense of permanence which we can enjoy summer and winter However, although box has been the stalwart in many gardens for centuries, it's now proving much more difficult to grow and it's been um, affected by pests and diseases, the most common of which are box blight and box tree caterpillar. So although I've never been affected by the box tree caterpillar, touch wood, hope not to be, but I'm sure will be eventually, um, we have been affected by box blight and I've been using a product by a company called Top Boxes um, who produce a range of products which tackle the problems associated with box wood. So we're going to come on and have a look at each of the products in more detail and how to use them. And if you're interested in any of the products, if you just click on the link in the description, um, you can go to the website and also um, there is a discount code too. So just to give you a little bit of background about Top Boxes. So Top Boxes are a company based in the Netherlands. They've been growing and supplying boxwood since 1987. So it's in their DNA. They understand the plant intimately and it's also in their vested interest to find a solution to dealing with the problems associated with box. So they're very clever scientists have been studying the effects of organic and mineral fertilizers on boxwood plants. And by 2008, box blight was really starting to have a big negative impact on the boxwood world. And this was the trigger for top boxes to come up with a solution that would be suitable for the domestic user. So they've come up with a, a soluble effervescent tablet. Um, which we as domestic users can use in our own gardens. So sadly, when growing box, it's no longer possible to have a sort of do nothing and hope for the best attitude to growing box. That really won't work and you will get um, pests and diseases um, afflicting your plants. So it's far better to take action, um, even if your plants are looking healthy. We're going to run through what to do to keep your plants looking good. And if you have got problems, again, what to do so the product range by Top Boxes includes products that keep your plants looking healthy and makes them much more resilient when diseases do come along and they're able to combat box blight and also products that can treat box tree caterpillar infestations. So we'll have a look at each of them in more detail. But I would say that the best policy is prevention. So by treating the box um, before you have problems, you'll make it resilient and much more able to um, fight diseases and pests when they come along um, and the other things there are some also basic care and tension that you need to do with when growing box and that is don't grow box in the areas where there's poor ventilation or very wet soggy soil doesn't like that um, and they are quite resistant to drought but if you do get um, extreme periods of drought and you do need to water or if your plants are growing in pots and you need to water them be sure to water at the base of the plant and don't use um, overhead irrigation systems because that will help spread any um, fungal spores and the other thing to do is when you clip your plants so when you're doing your annual clip um, be sure to pick up all the leaves and dispose of them especially if you know that they've got blight in them don't put them on the compost heap and also Finally, is just sterilise and disinfect your blades when you're cutting. Be sure to sterilise all your equipment before moving from one plant to the next or from one area in your garden to the next. Otherwise, you can um, spread the disease right around the garden. So some basic um, pieces of um, care and housekeeping, really. So how do you know if you've got box blight or whether you've got box tree caterpillar? So we'll talk first about box blight. So the early signs of box blight, you'll notice that you'll get these little orange spots appearing on young leaves. Um, these spots become browner and bigger as the disease spreads and eventually you'll start to get bold spots on the plant. Um, if it gets very severe, you can sometimes see little black stripes on the bark of the, um, the boxwoods. Um, so they're the signs that you're looking out for. And you'll just notice you'll get this um, defoliation, so no leaves, you'll get patches where, and it just doesn't look so healthy. So at this time of year, your box should be producing lovely bright green leaves, but 
you'll notice if your plants look dull and just a bit lifeless really and that they're not thriving and they're not doing so well. So what do you do if you discover you have got blight on your topiary or on your hedges? then simply the best course of action is to take a stiff brush and brush off the leaves. A coarse brush will just brush those leaves off. Um, up until very recently, I have, my instinct has always been to get, get in there with the masseketeers and cut the plant back hard. But top boxes have informed me that this isn't necessary and it will result in holes within your hedge, which will kind of look quite ugly. And this is what happened to me in last autumn. I cut um, one of the trees in the parterre, had an area of blight that appeared and, and I just cut it out. And it meant that throughout the winter, there was this rather ugly looking hole in that part of the garden, in that part of the plant. So um, they informed me that this isn't necessary. And if, there, if the branches, the twiggy branches do contain a bit of green, then it's not necessary to do that. Just simply brush off the leaves, um, the blighted leaves, and the plant will recover much more quickly. So that's interesting to know for the future. And then the next thing to be done is to spray the plant with the Top Boxes Health Mix. So as well as using the Top Boxes Health Mix on healthy plants to keep them robust and resilient, as we've talked about, um, this is also the treatment if you do have um, box blight, so it's not complicated. It's just basically use this product and it should be used throughout the growing season. And the growing season runs from March through to November. And it's a good idea in the first, the first part of the year is to do one treatment and then return a week later and do it again. And then thereafter treat monthly. So mark it on the calendar to be sure that you don't miss it. And the best time to spray is on a nice still um, dull day if possible if it's a hot summer's day best not to do it in the middle of the day but try and do it in the morning or in the evening don't do it on a wet day because the product will simply be washed off and don't do it on a windy day for the, for similar reasons but the product will just be blown away and not go where you intend it to go so try and choose um, a dull still day and I know that's often easier said than done especially in the UK at the moment it's been wet every single day so you just need a dry spell in which you can get spray the product on and let, let it have time to dry it doesn't matter if it rains um, you know several hours later as long as the product has dried after you've done it so this is the health mix that you need to then use on your box and the product comes in two different sizes and depending on how much box you've got depends on what size you need. So this, this pot has 10 tablets and that's enough to do 100 meters squared of box, which is quite a lot really. And this one has um, 100 tablets, which is enough to do a thousand meters squared of box. So it comes on a strip, a strip of tablets um, like this. And take one of the tablets and place it into your sprayer and dissolve with some water and it's recommended to use tap water. The components in this tablet will soften the water anyway so don't worry if you've got hard water that doesn't matter. So put it in the um, sprayer and then dissolve it in some water. Leave it for about 10 minutes um, to give it time to dissolve and you'll see it fizzing away and once it's stopped fizzing and it's dissolved and that usually is about 10 minutes, give the, give the um, sprayer a little shake just to distribute the um, solution and then you're good to go and you're ready to start spraying. So when you're ready to spray, spray liberally. So you're spraying the top and the sides of the box and in the plant if you possibly can, if you can really get in there, that really helps. So as you spray, it's a really good chance to get up close to your plant. So just examine them for any early signs of blight. And if you do come across anything, then just stop, put the sprayer down and brush out the leaves as we discussed, and then spray really thoroughly and spray really focus in on these areas where you know you've got a problem. So it's recommended to spray in March. If you haven't done so already, it's not too late. You can still do that in April. And I tend to spray and then return a week later and give it another spray. Um, and then after that, you can do it monthly um, for the rest of the growing season. And you should start to see a dramatic effect. So we'll go, I, I sprayed, I've sprayed in March. I sprayed again in April. And then I'm gonna go and spray a little bit more where there may be some problems because I have got blight in the garden. So we'll go and have a look at what it's looking like um, since I sprayed. And you'll see on this hedge, just how lovely the color is. It's bright, bright green. And doesn't that look good? 
Um, when you get the new regrowth after you've done, after you've treated your box, done it with the grow as well, so it's really had an injection of nutrients and it's really responded well. But when you see the new growth, if there are any bits that don't look so good, they really stand out. So here, if you stand back and look at this hedge, there are two areas which I'm going to focus in on. That bit which hasn't got the regrowth, hasn't got blight, but it just hasn't got the, the strong growth that this part has. And similarly there, that's not looking so good. So I'll come back and I'll spray that area as well. It might just be a case that I just didn't spray that area quite so well. So it's always quite good for highlighting any areas that you've missed. Although Top Box's Health Mix is a natural product, I think it's probably wise just to wear a mask and gloves when spraying. You cannot overdose your plants and the product is natural and is not harmful to animals or wildlife. Top Box's Health Mix works in the following ways. Magnesium and calcium strengthen and harden leaves and their cells, while copper, sulfur and citric acid burns fungal spores. Plants will not only look better, but they will become more robust and able to defend themselves better should diseases strike. So in addition to using the health mix, it's also recommend to use this product and this product is called Top Boxes Grow and this is an MPK fertilizer that's been developed specifically for the requirements of boxwood. So really good idea to use this because box is a very hungry plant and it's recognized that box tends to have three flushes of growth, one in mid-April, one in mid-June and one in mid-August. So if you can apply the fertilizer around these times, then it will give it that boost of nutrients that it needs to really grow and, and thrive and do well. And simply just scatter the granules around the base of the plant. You don't need to wear a mask, I just forgot to take mine off. <laughs> After the application of both of these products two weeks ago, we'll head into the parterre to have a look at the hedges in this part of the garden. So I just want to show you the parterre just to show you how lovely it's looking. And um, this is two weeks now after we put down the health mix and also the grow granulars. So I'm just going to show you what it's looking like. And there was one particular issue which I pointed out in last week's video um, just here. Um, you'll see that there's a bit of a chunk out of this tree and the story with this is we did have box blight in this tree which I noticed in autumn last year and I cut it back really hard and it did look quite ugly but you can see two weeks later if I just zoom in really close can you see all the new growth that's coming through so it is regrowing and very soon that little hole will infill and look as healthy as the rest of it does in this part of the garden and you'll also notice that um, we've got a product, a straw-like product, round the roses in this part of the garden, and it's also going round the, the front of the box. And this product's called Strolch. It's a mineralized straw. I don't think it's available in America, but I think there is an equivalent. Um, and if when you when you saw the drone footage that I put up of um, from top boxes, you'll notice that they use straw around the base of the plant. And the reason for using a product like this is that it um, acts a bit like a um, barrier. So when it rains, and it has just rained, the water, it can't form puddles and it can't splash back up onto the box. So it's just another tool in um, preventing box blight. And I think that's why this part is looking particularly good. We don't use it in all the garden because it is quite expensive. And incidentally, top box, do their own um, equivalent of this product and I think it's top box carpet I believe so um, just just wanted to show you that as well now I had a question from Chris on Instagram who sent me some pictures of his rather sad looking box hedge asking me whether or not I thought it would be possible for this hedge to be saved or whether it was dead um, my instinct was that it to me it looked dead and beyond saving but I did say I would send the pictures to top boxes to see what their response was and their response was this if the hedge has looked like that since last year then yes it, it's dead and it can't be um, recovered however it's difficult to see looking at the photographs whether there is any sign of green and the way to do that is to look down in the bottom of the plant and even scratch the bark back and see if there is any green beneath the bark. And if there is, there is hope. So in this instance, I would take a coarse brush and brush the hedge back hard to remove any blighted dead leaves, and then go in with your secateurs and remove um, any obviously very dead wood cut back to green growth. 
treat with the health mix and the grow granules um, and if it is going to recover now is the time to do it because now is the moment when box is having its biggest flush of growth in spring so if, it, if there is any hope then um, now is the time to maximise it and see what happens. So I'll be interested to hear from Chris whether he has managed to bring his poor hedge back from the brink of death. Um, but it is obviously better to not let your hedges get um, quite into this state and try and avoid that going forward, um, looking after the hedges with these products before they get into that state. So if you're looking at all these pictures and you're thinking that your hedges don't look great, but it doesn't look like box flight, and what you have got is perhaps a cobwebbed appearance over your box, or you notice some eggs or some caterpillars on your box, then the chances are you've got box tree caterpillar, the dreaded box tree caterpillar, also known as box moth or box tree moth. And this has come a, become a big, big pest on box plants in recent years and it can defoliate the plants ruining box balls, topiary and hedges in a matter of days and it's really really devastating. The signs of box tree caterpillar can be similar to that of box blight. While box tree caterpillar will not usually kill the plant outright they will weaken it through repeated attacks as the plant loses the ability to photosynthesize. So when all the leaves have been eaten the caterpillar will begin eating the green Cambrian layer of the bark. And if the main stem is eaten, then it will eventually kill the plant. Although birds are attracted to um, all the caterpillars, if you've got an infestation, um, predators don't seem to make a significant difference in getting rid of the caterpillars in the numbers to save the plant. So gardeners have had to rely on vigilance and biological control to make any impact on this problem. So box tree caterpillar is a larvae of box tree moth. The moth lays its eggs on the underside of the box leaves. These then hatch into caterpillars that create webbing over their feeding area and they munch their way through the box leaves. After about a month or so the caterpillar forms a chrysalis which emerges as a box tree moth which then mates resulting in more eggs being laid and there are usually two or three life cycles a year. The female moth can fly around 10 kilometres from where she was born hence its rapid spread. Box tree caterpillar can be a problem on box plants from March through to October and caterpillars can overwinter amongst the box foliage so although it's not possible to get rid of box tree caterpillar forever, there are ways that you can manage it. And the key is to be vigilant and to take action early if you spot a sign of infestation. So the first thing is to look out for signs of the caterpillar and be vigilant. So you're going up and down the plant looking for any, any signs. And if you see webbing on the tips of the plant, you can cut this out with secateurs. However, if you've got a lot of box, this isn't really a practical solution. It's incredibly time consuming. So top boxes make this product Zentara, which is a biological insecticide. It's extremely effective at killing the box tree moth caterpillars. It's 100% um, safe to use with, for humans and animals. And it can even be safe for the birds that eat the caterpillars. It won't do the birds any harm. And these graphics show quite simply how to use this product. Each box contains five sachets of treatment and the treatment is three grams in total and you should dissolve the three grams in three litres of water and just allow it to dissolve, give it a quick stir and then add it to your sprayer. Give it a little shake up and then you're good to go and ready to spray. So be sure to spray the product liberally all over the plant, really concentrating underneath the leaves um, as well just to catch any caterpillars that may be lurking there and one sachet is enough to treat 30 meters squared of box. Treatment needs to be repeated several times across the season. So Top Boxes also sells some moth traps and the moth traps work by attracting uh, by putting female pheromone in the traps which attracts the moth um, the moths into the traps. They won't catch all the moths um, but it will help 
Um, but what they do do, or they're very useful for, is letting you know that the moths are present in your garden. And if you know they are present, then you know you can predict when the new boxwood caterpillars will hatch. And that way you can use your biological treatment at exactly the right time and make sure that it's being used effectively. So with all these products in our arsenal in the fight against um, box blight and box tree caterpillar, um, thank you very much to Top Boxes for sponsoring this video, but also for producing these products that mean we as gardeners can do something about um, these problems and we don't just have to sit back and watch our, all our hard work and lovely garden being destroyed. So I wholeheartedly recommend the products from Top Boxes. We've been using them in our garden for many years now and I think really the results speak for themselves. Box is such a lovely plant and we just really enjoy it. It gives us that lovely structure all year round and um, some people are choosing to rip out box because they're struggling with pests and diseases. But if you adopt this um, regime, then it's quite easy to keep on top of box and keep it looking like this and looking lovely. So if you're interested in any of the products in, in the video, then head to the link and you'll see that there is a 10% discount code. Um, top boxes are based in the Netherlands as I said and so they distribute all over Europe however if you're outside of Europe then you can head to their website the main website and scroll down to the bottom and you'll see there that they've got a list of distributors so hope you enjoyed that video and you learned lots about box and join us again in the next video bye for now